Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Okay, yeah. There's already 200,000 videos on YouTube about shooting black and white film with color filters. But since when have I ever been original? Today we're gonna to be shooting black and white film with an orange filter, a classic amongst the days of film photography past. It's a pretty good pairing. Orange filters and film, they just go together, like chugging a milkshake and then going on a roller coaster. Of course, you gotta slide in a quick wink to the coaster operator before you fly off. People shoot black and white film with a number of different color filters, usually to emphasize or de-emphasize something in their work. Orange filters are amongst some of the most popular because they're quite effective at brightening warm sunlight, cutting through atmosphere, and then, you know, darkening blue sky. Basically, it adds some pheasant, sorry, pleasant contrast. Sunlight itself is kind of yellowish orange, so the filter allows it to pass through unharmed. If you need a visual, you can imagine it like those tubes that, you know, suck off fish and then launch them into new bodies of water. Blue, on the other hand, is a complementary color to orange, so it gets rejected, like me on prom night. I guess just imagine a dude with braces, bad acne, and a sick mullet crying next to a dumpster. That's blue when it's faced with an orange filter. Anyway, so where did we leave off in the last video that no one watched? Oh right, we are at this place where I was ripping some crazy dune jokes that you not only appreciated thoroughly, but couldn't get enough of and definitely were not tired of them whatsoever. With the heavy orange filter caked on, I decided to load up my Nikon F2 with some spicy Kodak T-Max 400 to finally fulfill the ancient prophecy scribed on the back of my camera. Hey, look at that. For once, the uh, thing in the back here is actually correct. This shot isn't exactly photographic greatness on a level never before seen on this planet, but it was ultimately just a test. I wanted to shoot a comparison with the filter and without to get some sense of what we're working with. Interestingly, I don't know. I don't think it really made a huge difference. If you look closely, there is some increased contrast in the orange filter shot, but nothing too substantial. And I think I know why. We were shooting a location that was mostly, you know, yellow orange with early morning light that is mostly also yellow orange. And the sky, though very slightly blue, was still looking early morning yellow orange. Basically, there wasn't a ton of color contrast in the landscape yet. We'll try another comparison later on if you're still watching at that point and, you know, didn't click off to go watch something more interesting. Also, if you're gonna use filters, definitely clean them beforehand. Be better than me. Or, you know, just embrace chaos completely and just fully lean into it. Do these images go hard as f or limp as a blimp? I mean, this one is pretty good. The contrast is certainly the defining characteristic. I don't know what compelled me to take it, but I'm sure glad I did. That'll be a good one. So it wasn't a good one, but whatever. On to a different location, finally. We spotted this farmhouse thing along the side of the road and had to check it out. And the skies were starting to look a little bit more promising in the photos. Here's the thing, the blue skies, they're never really gonna go full shade of black with the orange filter, but you will get this nice darkening kind of grad effect that I would characterize as pheasant, a pleasant, sorry. This shot is a prime example of what I'm talking about. The tones are nice and moody with a darkened sky and clearly better cloud definition. With no filter, I would kind of hypothesize that the sky and the clouds here would be a lot, lot brighter and thus less textural overall as we'd likely lose cloud detail to the background brightness. I think orange filters strike a nice balance between a yellow filter and a red filter. I mean, I guess that isn't a groundbreaking thought. Orange is literally smack dab in between those two colors, Jason, you f***ing moron. What I guess I mean is like, I've shot with yellow filters aplenty in my travels, and while they're good, I've 
kind of found them to not always deliver a substantial effect. Red filters, however, definitely deliver that effect, over deliver it sometimes. It starts to look a little unnatural in some cases, a little like nighttime during the day, which can be used effectively. I mean, don't get me fucked up here. Freaking Ansel Adams used the red filter quite a bit. I've just been finding the orange filter to be a nice blend of the two. It darkens skies, sure, but kind of in a naturalistic and not too dramatic way. Believe me, I think we got enough drama from Love is Blind this year. However, it all seems to depend on what you meter for. I have noticed that if you expose for something very bright like this, it will knock the background sky down quite a bit, almost kind of emulating a red filter in the end. Can the orange filter work for interiors as well? Yeah, I suppose, but like, why would you? I guess it's not really commonly attributed to that kind of work. One thing that you definitely need to consider if you're gonna use an orange filter is that it takes your available light down a peg. Speaking of pegging, for this shot, I was basically wide open. The shot turned out great, but we don't really see any effect of the orange filter here, except maybe slightly more contrast, and thus removing it for lower light situations seems imperative. Why? Well, the filter factor for an orange filter is somewhere at or above one stop of light, sometimes up to two stops of light, depending on which shady back alley photographer you talk to. And cutting that much light sometimes, oftentimes, can be the deciding factor between a blurry photo and a sharp one. Of course, the best thing you can do for yourself is simply just use a camera with a through the lens meter or TTL meter, same thing. That way the meter is seen through all the bullshit you got going on and your orange filter. Here's another comparison where we can see the effect in action a little bit clearer. The background clouds are definitely a little bit more defined against the sky because it's slightly more shaded. Notable too, there is also a bit more contrast in the shadows of the building. It's a subtle effect, but it leaves a lasting impact. Or at least that's what I tell myself every night as I cry myself to sleep. Did I ruin it? this is properly exposed. I found a really layered shot. We'll see if it works out. In the meantime, you get to look at my ass. Did this shot work out? I wouldn't really say so. Tires, house, framed by the tree branches. Layers, bitch. Yeah, layers and whatnot, but like compositionally, who gives a This location was really cool, especially because I shot one of my favorites here. That's good, but I need you out of the way. <laughs> it's got beautiful lighting, wonderful deep sky grad, and pheasant, pleasant, sorry, damn it, composition. My other photos could learn a thing or two from this. This photo, it good too. But shortly after taking it, Caleb bumped into somebody camping out inside the building who probably doesn't like orange filters. I don't know, I didn't get a chance to ask him. So we got the hell out of there before he beat the shit out of us for nope, someone's there. deducting the color blue from our photos. It truly seems like the orange filter is a landscape photography technique. It's good for midday lighting and harsh lighting at that, which is something that I use black and white film for quite a bit already. I mean, if you aren't shooting black and white regularly, I think it can be deduced that you aren't making fart regularly. Fine art. I'm still trying to get that to catch on. I think if nothing else, the orange filter is effective and kind of working to trick the viewer's eye into thinking this black and white photo was taken around sunset. Just the combination of, you know, strong light and dark background maybe unconsciously tricks our unevolved ape brains into thinking it's magic hour. I'm not saying you should bring this filter along to shoot your next wedding. Definitely test it out first. But if you're out in the field, let's say doing war photography, then you're probably good. Though at the end of the day, wedding photography, war photography, same shit. 
Anyway, this shot is good too. With the shade and the darkened sky behind the trailer, it really draws your eye to where the sun is hitting on the front and almost kind of compositionally isolates the light nicely. That's the power of this filter. It can do shit like that if you're a competent photographer. Unfortunately, I am not, but maybe, just maybe, with this filter, you might get lucky. But speaking of lucky, how lucky are you to hear about today's sponsor, Squarespace? Let's face it, your friends, family, and maybe even your cat too, probably constantly see you out and about with a camera in your hands, but maybe rarely actually get to see your work for themselves. Why don't you go ahead and make it easy for them and present it in the best light possible with a portfolio through Squarespace. Squarespace is an industry standard, all-in-one website building platform that gives you the reins to build a professional looking website that surpasses even your wildest imagination. I've completed several photo assignments and recently redeveloped my website to reflect the work I put together for each assignment with something called Fluid Engine, a streamlined and systematic workflow option for building web pages, reorganizing my work, and creating a visceral gallery to showcase my work was a breeze. If you don't know where to start with building websites, Squarespace makes it easy by giving you hundreds of professionally designed templates to choose from and even swap out to if you change your mind. Additionally, if you reach the point where you'd like to begin building a community centered around your brand or your work, Squarespace makes it easy and convenient with its member areas architecture, a monetized way to give access to exclusive content through your website. Website. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, I dig the orange filter look. It kind of just adds an extra dimension to my black and white photography. So I've already gone ahead and Gorilla glued the Tiffin Orange 16 to the front of my lens so I can keep shooting with it forever and don't need to worry about losing it. I didn't make this video to tell you that you absolutely have to shoot with an orange filter. If I did, it would look something like this clickbaity ass At the end of the day, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to listen to me. I'm not your mommy though I am open to it if the position's available. Shoot with it or don't shoot with it. The choice is yours. Nothing really matters anyway. We're likely just Boltzmann brains filled up with some chemical memory cocktail that drives us to do photography so that we never realize we're just brains floating in a void. You know, probably.